It's been three years since the FDA declared youth vaping an epidemic. The agency now has a hefty decision on its plate. Should Juul, the most well-known vaping company in the U.S., be allowed to continue selling its e-cigarettes? The company, e-cigs they're called, the company, after all, did agree to pay the state of North Carolina $40 million to settle a lawsuit that was complaining the company marketed its products to kids and misled us about the risks. That's just one of thousands of suits lodged against the company. Juul, for its poor, uh, part, did not admit intentionally targeting youth. The company and its defenders, like Greg Conley, the president of the American Vaping Association, make this argument. If you ban flavors, you're going to increase smoking. And the most popular flavors among adults, contrary to a lot of the rhetoric, are sweet and fruits. Your argument so we is should come to our a kids solution. will smoke unless they vape? That's what you're trying to say? We don't want any youth to vape, but the reality is youth experiment. We just saw from 2018 to 2019 the largest decrease in teen smoking that we've ever seen. About yeah, but the question is, decline. is what they're doing now killing them? Because what goes into your devices they, is causing a lot of problems around this country. And how do you not have responsibility for that? Now, here is the answer to the question. They are responsible. And too many kids are drawn to vaping by marketing and peer pressure. As much or more than cigarettes today. Ask a parent who pays attention. Dorian Furman is the co-founder of PAVE. Parents Against Vaping E-Cigarettes. It's good to have you on Primetime. Thank you for having me, Chris. We saw each other this weekend. I told Dorian I would cover it, and here yeah. we are. Because it still matters. It's not in the headlines. Here we are. Sh shame on us. But the problem continues. Uh, the idea that we have moved past this, what have you learned uh, in your advocacy work about what's happening today with kids and vaping? We, we haven't moved past this. I think it's a problem because we're not talking about it. You know, um, Juul created the youth vaping epidemic. They did not launch their e-cigarette device to help adults quit smoking. They created a sexy new nicotine delivery system and the kids flocked to it about five years ago. And you know, this is personal for me. My son um, was introduced to Juul in the summer before ninth grade. But what really got us started was when we discovered that Juul had sent a representative into our kids' ninth grade class under the guise of an alcohol and drug anti-addiction talk and proceeded to tell the kids, without the school's knowledge, that Juul was totally safe and about to get FDA approval. And the issue is that today there are almost four million kids who are vaping in this country and we're not doing anything about it. And at the same time, the FDA is considering authorizing flavored e-cigarette products. It's just unacceptable. We can't let that happen. Their pushback is that it does help people get off cigarettes and that has not been connected to the same kind of health risks yet. What do you say? Well, you know what? There's no proof to that. And, um, Let's be clear, Juul is Big Tobacco, and Big Tobacco is Juul. Um, they are owned now in part by Altria, which is Philip Morris and Marlboro, and they are up to the old tricks of Big Tobacco. They paid to have a peer-reviewed journal of their own paid research published and open, you know, no, um, no subscription necessary so that everyone could see that Juul was helpful for smokers, but this is this is paid research. It's what Big Tobacco used to do in the 50s when they paid um, doctors to tell their patients that they should smoke cigarettes. So there is no proof that it helps um, adult smokers quit smoking, but there is proof that kids are addicted to flavors. And you know, we represent the millions of parents around this country um, who are dealing with this vaping epidemic in their homes, you know, firsthand. Here's what Jules says. Uh, about the settlement, and I'll give you a chance to respond to it. Um, we're going to put it up? Good. This settlement is consistent with our ongoing effort to reset our company as we continue to combat underage usage and advance the opportunity for harm reduction for adult smokers. We seek to continue to earn trust through action. For example, we cease the distribution of our non-tobacco, non-menthol flavored products in advance of FDA guidance and halted all mass market uh, mass market product advertising. Um, how do you view this, uh, this stated change in course to right their ways? 
You know what? They haven't really changed course. The, um, the most popular flavor among teens today is menthol. And they have left their menthol pod on the market, and they are applying for FDA approval for that menthol pod. Over 40% 40 per, 40 of kids are vaping menthol, and, you know, dozens percentage more are, are vaping iced flavors, the iced candy, which aren't Juul, but they're iced and they're mentholated. You know, the FDA made an incredible um, announcement in April that they were going to start the rulemaking process to end the sale of menthol cigarettes because menthol is incredibly toxic and incredibly addictive. Mm. You know, for that same reason, they should not approve any menthol e-cigarette products because menthol is toxic and menthol amplifies the impact of nicotine in the product. And is, you know, we have a whole generation of kids who would have never vaped, they would have never smoked cigarettes, and now we have a generation of nicotine addicts. And the health effects of it are real and palpable, and you can find them online. Dorian Furman, thank you Awful. for the advocacy. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you. And come to parentsagainstvaping.org and, you know, join, join us and, and fight back. We'll be right back.